Hello ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for digitaldojos.com. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to paint on iOS with Pixelmator. The folks at Pixelmator have made the amount of content that we've been doing on graphic design and Pixelmator itself possible these last couple of days. So I really, really wanna give them a huge shout out and thanks. Pixelmator for iOS, be it the iPhone, the iPad, or Mac OS X, which we've been showcasing, have been my go-to image editor, not just because it's a really affordable price point in this space, but because of the sheer amount of tools and work that goes into the app itself, the technology behind it, the feature set that they offer, whether you're a novice designer like myself or a veteran or advanced graphic designer who does it for a living, Pixelmator offers you all the tools to do exactly what you need and in the end, you're only limited by your creativity. So be sure to check out more information over at pixelmator.com. Here we are in Pixelmator on iOS for the iPhone, and we're gonna talk about painting today. So keep in mind, I am by no means an artist. I'm gonna go ahead and create a blank canvas here. Uh, I am by no means a artist. I have not you know, much background in, in painting in itself. However, I do love the ability to just kind of free draw and, and make really great creative pieces uh, via things like my iPhone or Mac OS X. And in this digital age, the tools and technology that are offered to us allow anybody like myself to create really great works of art <laughs> just by you know using your fingertips. And that's the great thing about apps like Pixelmator. And that's what I'm gonna be focusing on today, how to paint via Pixelmator on your iPhone, on your iPad, if you want that bigger canvas. And again, you don't need to be concerned if you're just you know somebody who just wants to dabble around or somebody who wants to create really amazing portraits. You can click on the paint tool in the top here and you can see you'll be offered these multiple tools that Pixelmator includes. I'll click on paint. You can see it shows me the current brush that I'm working with as well as the color that I'm working with. Pixelmator, when you tap on the brush, shows you the first off the preview of the brush you're selected on. And then you can adjust the size here by percent here and you can see I'll show you a live preview and you can adjust the opacity so the transparency of the brush if you want it to be lighter you can adjust that down you want it to be very harsh and solid and you can make it 100 percent keep in mind Pixelmator's brushes really really detailed they really take into a lot of consideration for example my favorite pack of brushes are the watercolor brushes the blending technology that goes into them when they overlap is just really really great you don't get these rough edges you get these really fine detailed points of overlaps and, and things of that nature. So you can see the categories of brushes they have by swiping left to right. You have pencil brushes, crayon brushes, markers, ink, paint, uh, your spray cans, which are really fun to work with, your watercolor brushes, and your smudge brushes. And keep in mind, as you see them, you can swipe up and down to see what other brushes they offer within that specific category here to find the perfect brush that you wanna work with. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and work with the Aqua Flow brush, one of my favorites. Tap on the color picker tool here. You can see you have the ability to swipe between your colors at the bottom here, and then precisely pick that color that you want right here. If you click on previous, it'll jump back to your previous color that you had selected. Current will actually allow you to get a more detailed look at the color that you're on right now, and you can get the perfect shade and hue of the color that you want. So I wanna work with this color right here, uh, and you can see here I can just tap and I can create a stroke. I can, of course, just drag along. And mind you, I'm just using my finger here. Of course, you can use something like uh, a, a stylus if that works better for you. Uh, you can use the eyedropper tool in the top left to get a more precise color if you're working with not a blank canvas, but you're working with like an actual image that you import into the uh, app here. I'm gonna lower the opacity here and I'm just gonna kind of go over the background here to create this really kind of soft uh, blue sort of background here. And you can see here just how great this looks here. And by zooming in here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick another color here to work with. So let's go with a green to kind of create a, almost like a look of land here. And I'll pick up that opacity and I'm gonna go ahead and go over the bottom here a couple times to create that kind of water, watercolor blending look here. And you can see how it blends over where I make double strokes here. It makes it much more of a harsher color. I can zoom in, you can see how detailed those overlaps are, those edges, they're not harsh. They're just very subtle and very blended like a watercolor brush would look like in real life here. So that's what I like. The attention to detail with these brushes are just really, really amazing here. And obviously I can go about filling in more stuff here just to kind of complete the image. And as you can see here, I have a very rough image laid out here using different brushes and you know utilizing the sizes and the transparency. 
And the great thing about Pixelmator, along the way here, you can undo any step that you made here. If you hold the undo button, you can actually choose what specifically you want to undo or redo in the picture. Uh, and since it's a full featured image editor, if I swipe in from the left here, you can work with layers. So if you're familiar with layers and how that works, if you want to have something just in the background and you don't want other objects to interfere with that, background layer or coding, then you can easily do that. Or you can just go for the one canvas approach and work with that. You can readjust your layers by holding them and then dragging them on top of another. Again, really giving you the complete control over your image and how you want to go about customizing it. If you want to work with layers, if you just kind of want to go one canvas and go. Uh, and keep in mind, while you're just using your paintbrushes, you're not limited to that. You can go back and check out the other tools that they offer. You can use the controls that they offer to distort the image, warp the image, and create that work of art that you really want to work with here. And while this is by no means a masterpiece, the stuff that is made with Pixelmator, which I'm going to throw up on the screen right now, you can just get a feel for the level of stuff that can be created with this. Uh, and that's what I really, really love about apps like Pixelmator. The tools are just there for you to work with. And then from there, it's what your creativity and your imagination decides to make with that. It's really what the potential of the apps like these have to offer. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Pixelmator and painting on your iOS device. Uh, Pixelmator is simply one of the best image editors out there for mobile or desktop. Be sure to check it more out at pixelmator.com. I've had a really great time creating this series of videos. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to hit up that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And as always, thanks for watching.